Hi, this is Shauna, the CEO and founder of Fuel Talent. One of the things I have loved most in my 25-year recruiting career has always been the stories that people tell. Stories of leadership, career choices, company ideas, and team building. My inspiration for starting the What Fuels You podcast came from being curious about people's lives and wanting to help share their stories. What path brought them to this place? What decisions did they make that led to failures and successes? Who influenced those decisions and what lessons were learned along the way? I hope you enjoy the What Fuels You podcast. Today's guest on the What Fuels You podcast is Nick Hughes. As the CEO of Founders Live, Nick Hughes is a successful American entrepreneur with business achievements in social media, digital payments, and e-commerce. He excels at interpersonal leadership, communication, business, and product development. In addition to creating the global startup marketplace Founders Live, Nick stays busy as an advisor to numerous startups and occasionally takes positions in sales or biz dev roles as needed. Previously, he founded the mobile payment startup Seconds, and he helped start CoinMe, a company built around expanding Bitcoin and digital transactions into the physical realm via Bitcoin ATMs. As a sought-after advisor, entrepreneurial speaker, and writer with guest appearances on popular technology and media outlets, Nick enjoys helping others discover their unique entrepreneurial path and is on a mission to elevate entrepreneurial equality around the world. Welcome, Nick. Good to see you. Pleasure to be here. This is I got, really a, I got a little tongue tied, but I started talking about like Bitcoin. My brain is going crazy because all of a sudden my son is into this stuff. And this is like the word of the hour. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot of them. And, um, you know, the funny thing, as you mentioned in that intro, um, that's crazy. You picked that up because uh, I, I'm just going to kind of say this, this is the way the world works and the universe works is, I was just uh, looking at right before I got on the podcast, uh, coin me, I just got an email saying it's turning seven. And I was a part of the, uh, there was like three people. I was like the third person I was not a co-founder, but um, Neil Burquist in Seattle, um, you know, reached out to me and had me uh, come a part of the, the team to help launch that. And it was like the first Bitcoin ATM. It was like the seventh one in the United States. We're going to start with some rapid fire. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. Since you're Mr. Traveler, I think you're even in an Airbnb right now, like launching your business all over the country. What's your favorite city? Cape Town, South Africa. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to add them writing this down. Cape Town is a beautiful city. It's kind of at the point at the uh, south tip of um, actually the continent of Africa. And so South Africa, it's beautiful. Obviously the country has some challenges as, as all countries do, but South um, or, you know, Cape Town is just an amazing city. So that's the one that stuck out over the last couple of years for sure. I love it. I want to hear all about all these different places you've been traveling. I'm kind of jealous. I got to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. What is the best way aside from getting on stage that you access your kind of adrenaline rush? Oh, I think it's, um, this is a good question. Um, cause I think stage and being in front of people is, is the way I do it. Um, I, I guess I would just say this, that, um, I am a, I, I just love to try new things and sometimes it's not the big ones. It's not like, I'm not talking about like, like, bungee you know, jumping. Sky, yeah, yeah. Skydiving, bungee jumping. You know, I actually haven't done that yet, but I just, um, let's put it this way. Um, I love, because I've been traveling a lot, um, just being dropped in a new city and just like going down like random streets and corners and, and like, you know, side streets and learning the city and like get going and, you know, end up going out and meeting some random people and having fun. So I think that it's pretty safe. It's not jumping out of an airplane. Yeah, but, but that's um, a good adrenaline rush. I love that. Yeah. I totally yeah. get that. So, okay. So if you had any superpower... What would it be? To know, to go 30 seconds or a minute in the future and know what's going to be said or done. What was going to, what was going to happen in literally like one minute? Hmm. I feel like that would take away from all your charm though, because you're so good on your feet. This is true. This is true. Um, but I, wouldn't it be interesting to know 
to have a little edge on that. And I'm not talking about like, know the future, like five years out, what's going to happen. I'm, I'm literally just like, could you do a little mini step? Because I think a mini step would would actually give you such an edge on everything, either personal life or business. So, okay, so you're Mr. Uh, fitness. How do you like to stay in shape? Oh, this is such a great question because um, you know I've been um, primarily living on the road in various cities and Airbnbs for like the last two years, and you know when you go b- b- before that you know if you have like a gym that you go to or go lift weights i mean that's all set and you know where to go and it's consistent um so being in new cities all the time you got to figure it out and so i um what i do little tips here everyone um i you know i my calendar tells me to it has that in the morning i work out in the morning and it's just after my meditation it's workout and um, there's some days where if I've worked out two or three times in a, days in a row, I'll, you know, just delete it and not have a workout day, but I go out and run. Um, I actually recently, I bought this like little bag kit that actually I have a couple of push up handles and then some, um, some bands. And I just like take this bag. And so I'm actually in Atlanta right now. And so I, um, you know, recently got here and so I found my place where I'm going to work out where I went and worked out the other day and I've run with this bag and I go and I do a strength workout some of the days. And then some of the days I do just a, a, you know, a, like this morning I went on like a, probably a four, four mile run. And, um, you know, what's amazing about that too, is you can, you, you learn the cities and you yeah. all run down the streets and like, look at these houses and be like, I wonder who lives there. Like, I wonder yeah. what this life is like. And, you know, I've done that in, um, you know, Boston, in Harare, Zimbabwe, in Art Buenos Aires, Argentina, in London. And so I've just ran, you know, for me, like, that's the consistent thing yeah. for me is any city I've been in, I will go run around these neighborhoods and and not only get a workout, but just kind of like see what life is like. So it's that sounds cool. super fun. I love it. Okay. Um, since you're constantly meeting entrepreneurs and leaders, I'm curious if there's a leader that you most admire or want to meet. Um, I'm going to say two answers here. Uh, one that's alive and one that's not. Um, so I would say the alive, it would be, um, I, you know, I would really, really love to sit down with, uh, Barack Obama. I think he would be an amazing conversation and, uh, just really been impressed the way that he handled his years in office. Um, And then not alive uh, would be Benjamin Franklin. Uh, I think that Franklin was in terms of our history was probably the first real main entrepreneur that mixed like, you know, part of the founding fathers, but also, I mean, the, what he did back then was like so many different things from like a printer to actual scientific discovery to creating all like a number of companies and man, what an amazing uh, dinner that would be. Yeah. with. Oh, with wow. Benjamin. Can you imagine? Yeah. Okay. So since you you're like the energizer bunny, um, mm-hmm. I'm curious what you would either get up early to do or stay up late to do. If you're just like, this is the thing that would absolutely keep me up. Or get me. Um, weirdly enough, I'm finding myself <laughs> much more in meditation. So I'm gonna. This is the twist on your 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 question. Um, I would. I find myself late at night if I can't fall asleep. I will actually um, meditate. And for me, it's I actually put on my headphones and there's literally calm meditation station of music. And, um, it's a weirdest thing. Like I am so growing right now in this area that it allows me to go to a place. Cause you know, when you're laying there and especially as a founder and an entrepreneur, you just have these things going in your mind. Um, I've figured out a way to go into a different space and, and calm that down. And so I would get up, I get up or, or, you know, I don't get up that early, but I get up and immediately do that every day. But if I'm having trouble going to sleep, I will go and do that. So yeah. um, that to you. me, oh yeah. Like I'm starting to really figure out that space where you can calm it down. You go into a different place and space and you can, it's not feel like, God, I keep going. Like I'm tossing and turning in my bed. It's actually like, I'm going to 
put that out there and then it's the equivalent of like you know writing it down on a on a piece mm-hmm. of paper and then now you can go to sleep that's me i'm able to do that in in Good like kind you. of a spiritual it's amazing yeah super important always but especially in this past year this kind of idea of self-care and actually doing it and that's such an important part of it okay final question and then we're gonna do a deep dive into nick hughes you ready my Let's final question is um is there some sort of app that you use every day or that you just can't live without? What app are you using every day? Let me, let me check. Um, I'll, so I'll answer it this way. Um, I, the way that I am living now, um, Google maps is an absolute treasure. It's uh, if you realize like, so the way I'm navigating around the world, I'm, I'm, been in Airbnbs like I think I've spent over thirty five thousand dollars in the last couple of years in Airbnbs. Um, I have uh, when I'm in a new city, you, you're able to t- take your phone, hit a button, and a, and a car shows up, so it can take you anywhere. And then when you're in a new city, you have a map. It's an intelligent map right in your hand. So I would say Google Maps is probably the application that I use the most. And I also, when I land in a new city, I'll just like, I'll literally, if I'm like laying there and I can't really sleep for some reason, I'll just, I'll kind of like check out the city from Google maps to see where I want to go. And especially my, where I'm at, like what's around me, is there parks around or like, if I'm going to go on a run, like what's my route? Is there uh, coffee shops? Is there bars? Like where am I going to go? And um, so I can tell you that Google maps is probably one of the most amazing toys if you actually really dig into it. Yeah. I need to learn how to use it better. Okay. So I don't even know this about you, which is so weird because we've been friends, I feel like for like almost at least maybe almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where you grew up. Are you from Seattle? I grew up in Yakima, Washington. Oh, awesome. So you're from this area, but not necessarily. So you're in Eastern Washington. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in Yakima. Um, All you that are uh, familiar with that, you know, it's um, kind of central Washington and um, central Washington. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. um, Definitely, you know, different than Seattle and, um, you know, was an athlete, you know, we have a lot of sports going on there. I was an athlete pretty much, you know, through high school up into college and, you know, we're running around like, playing sports and then you know in the hop fields or orchards and so it's um you know it's it's pleasant to go back to but for sure it became pretty clear that this is not the place that I wanted to mm-hmm. are there a lot know. of your friends still there in Yakima like some of people them leave? well some of them stayed and you know like if they have family businesses or whatnot some of them left and then are now back there raising their family um you know some of them are obviously gone but you know it, it's an interesting question which is um our our group that grew up together are really close and um i am much more closer to my grade school and high school friends than I was in my for my college friends you know what I mean so Mm -hmm. um that's an interesting yeah it's an interesting stuff there but I go I go there first often and how are you as a student were you focused on kind of um figuring out I guess as a kid what did you think you wanted to be (sighs) you know I, I initially it was maybe a lot of American uh, younger children want to do this, but, you know, I wanted to be an athlete and I want, I, I was, I was that kid that uh, no joke. I was that kid that um, I just remember this, like eating breakfast before going to school. And I'm like, I've got this sports page out and I'm literally looking at the box scores of baseball or basketball. And I'm like looking at how many, how many hits did Ken Griffey Jr. have? Like what's his batting average, you know, like, what's you know so I'm just like digging deep in this and I just love it you know mm-hmm. and I'm so I'm just a sports fan in and out and um so you know definitely athletics was was a big thing I can yeah. tell you that give what I do now I kind of wish I knew what was a possible at that time that I knew like oh you can create a company and you can like build things and I didn't even know that like this right. is just not wasn't even part of my world so for me it was what I knew was oh my gosh like wouldn't it be cool to play a sport and get paid millions of dollars for it um and <laughs> everybody and just would play, want that play yeah. a sport 
Yeah. yeah. And you went to so Western was, Western University and studied exercise physiology, which I loved learning that about you. Um, yeah. So and you were going to maybe do, it did, sounds like you worked for the Sonics and the Storm and you were doing strength training. Yeah. So check what? this out. When... Um, when I realized that I wasn't going to be a professional athlete, I made the like kind of nice little shift of thought to, well, why don't I just train them and work with them and coach them? And, you know, I think that there's a thread here that we can pull on, which is, um, you know, I studied, you know, human physiology, biomechanics, kinesiology. So really understanding the, the, the study of movement. And then I, tied that to, you know, sports performance and working with athletes and training people. So I started working with, you know, college athletes, professional athletes, my first job out of school, out of university or Western Washington University in Bellingham there uh, was with the Sonics and Storm. And I was the the head strength coach for the Storm um, assistant, you know, one of the assistants for the the Sonics. Um, So literally, like I really before I was even graduating college, I was going down and like to key arena. And I was like, there and working with, um, you know, the, the practice facility, by the way, uh, is where the Melinda, Bill and Melinda Gates, um, their, um, the, the foundation, their foundation office, that property was actually right where the practice facility mm. was. That was like my office and um, worked with those athletes, training these athletes and stuff. And so, you know, at a young age, I think one of the threads, there's two threads I want to point out here. One of the threads was, it wasn't that I was ever thinking entrepreneurship and being a founder, but I was always ambitious. And I was always like, you know, I wasn't the best student in, in the school. I wasn't the best athlete, but I understood dedication, work ethic, and just figuring it out. And then, you know, I was ambitious enough to like, before I graduated from high school, I'm now like working with these professional athletes. I'm taking them through workouts and training. Yeah, them. Yeah, those and are hard jobs to get. Everybody wants that job. I know. And I got it through, um, you know, I had an internship my junior year with the Sonics and then, um, and then a got the, got, they asked me to jump on to the team yeah. for after when I graduated. And it was really amazing, you know, um, and I would say the second thread on this was the aspect of coach you know, what, what is a coach in general and a coach helps individuals achieve their best or helps them push themselves farther than they maybe otherwise would. And I think when you look at what I do now, there's an aspect of, um, coach leadership, um, having, being an example that, look, people, we can do more than we think. We can actually improve. We can shift and we can manifest ourselves into much better people, businesses, entrepreneurs, if we just work hard, measure and strive. And and mm-hmm. I learned that like early, early on, which was yeah. a really, really cool thing. And I didn't even know I was learning that. And so what ultimately made you kind of pivot out and go toward um, kind of a business route, entrepreneurial? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, there was a couple of things. Number one, you know, I had a conversation with the head strength coach of the Sonics and I remember him saying like, Hey, you know, this is kind of like a long journey and you're, you know, we don't get paid all that great. And you're working with athletes that are getting paid 10 or 20 or a hundred times, literally what you're getting paid. Um, and just, he's just be aware, just be aware of what's going on. And, and, and so that was in, it wasn't like he talked me out of it, but I just remember being like, okay, that was like something he's kind of telling me, like, just know the road ahead here. Secondly, you know, when you're either working with professional athletes or I was then training also in health clubs and whatnot, and you can impact individuals or a small group of people, but I don't know what it was, but I just started to feel this thing where I was like, there's a bigger, there's something bigger here. Right. You wanted to have a bigger influence. Very much a bigger impact and bigger influence. And I wanted to impact millions of people. It wasn't that I wasn't enjoying changing, you know, changing someone's life or getting them more healthy or helping them perform, but it just, I I wanted to impact more people. And I'm just very curious and fascinated with, you know, what, what's possible and technology. And, Mm -hmm. and, and, and then this was like, 
kind of mid 2000s, right? And then kind of going into like 2008, 2009, 2010, you know, as, as the iPhone came out, you know, Facebook was growing and there was just kind of this interesting shift with uh, a lot of like mobile and technology that was really starting to seep into our world. It just became clear, like, no, this, I'm, this is what I want to do. You can make impact, but you can also like, there's a lot of opportunity for wealth creation and, um, you know, great things, things to impact people. And so, Yeah. yeah, I just, I was just pulled. I was literally pulled into it. I, basically for about five years kind of went this like flip and self-studied I would um I was that guy I was that trainer that um you know at the time I'm like having you know clients at a health club but if I had like a three-hour break I would literally be done I would go to Starbucks I would like open up a book or I would read like business week and I would literally study and like what's going on with technology. And then I would like close it up, go back to the gym and like be in, you know, kind of the trainer. Right. And Good for felt, you though. Right. But it felt really, um, Oh, I don't, I don't know what the term to use here. I was going to say something, but I won't, but it's <laughs> more like, it just felt like I was living not the, the, the correct life and I was like this is not good I'm feeling like I want to go that way even though I'm going here to get paid right so I finally like stepped away and you know oh my lab uh actually I was working for Boeing in their health and fitness department like managing some like their on-site like entire um company uh fitness and health um one part of the team that was running that and um I just left I remember I kind of had a Jerry Maguire moment I was just like, I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And I remember just kind of like walking out and um, being done and saying, I'm absolutely committed to myself as an entrepreneur and how I want to impact the world. And that was 11 years ago. Yeah. So 11 years ago, I know you started Founders Live. um, 2000, is it right that you started it in 2014? 2014. Yeah, yeah. So you've been at this for a while, like almost seven years. Yeah. What led to starting it? Like, where was the gap that you saw that you were trying to kind of solve a problem? Yeah. You know, initially, there's two parts to that. Um, the first one was, I mean, the, the origins of Founders Live, which you were, you know, we have a mutual friend. It's kind of how we met. Um, and the origins, actually, we were we were actually creating conversations and re-recording them. It was called Founders Raw. And, um, you know, that was like before Founders Live came out. And um, I not only was I would do in that, but I was like, you know what? I think that there's, I think there's more I want to do around this, not just capturing stories and interviewing like people and entrepreneurs. Um, But um, what I found was, you know, I was at the time, this was in Seattle, I was, um, that was kind of the tail end of seconds, uh, that didn't go well. It kind of crashed and I was struggling. I was emotionally not in a good place. I was, you know, kind of a little bit of a entrepreneur de- depression and, uh, decided to just put on an event and, um, in, it was like March 29th or 30th of 2014, we put on the very first founders live event. It was called feature Friday and um got people together and just want to have a good time and um you know put together like hey this is a pitch competition and let's see what happens and it turned out it went really well and um there's a format and a formula that we like decided that very first night Mm -hmm. and um so i would just say that the problem was community the problem was i did not see the community and the the like entire structure of a multifaceted in, you know, in environment, uh, marketplace experience events that not only were what in the flavor of Nick or what I wanted to see, but this kind of falls into, we can talk about in a second, but like that, that really surrounded around core values, you know? And so when you look at back in 2014, there are other pitch events, there are other tech things going on, but you know, did they really include everyone? Did they really have a flavor of um, encouragement, support? Were they cool? Mm-hmm. Did they have some rock and music? You know, just casual rather than awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, encouraging rather than um, judging. 
So we don't have judges. We don't have judges up there saying you were good, you suck, blah, blah, blah. We have the crowd vote. So mm -hmm. I think- and, and the format, is it still the same? Is it like the 99? Yeah, 99 seconds, seconds uh, five startups, 99 seconds, four minutes of Q&A after and who, that 99 who, second pitch. How do you find the startups? Do they apply to be on it? Or do you, at the beginning, you're finding them? Or how does that work? Yeah, so, you know, any, like, as people know in Seattle, uh, you know, we're pretty vocal about um, we're looking for, you know, startups and founders of, of any, any type uh, um, of, of any orientation or gender. And we really put out that message. So basically it's, you can, uh, you can reach out to the organizers, you can apply. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's um, very well known that, you know, when Founders Live is happening, we, we look for founders. Like we want to highlight these, these individuals. Um, but just to touch on that last thing real quick, which is, um, and, and I'm going to make this quick, although the story is longer, I'm going to make this quick because I think we got a lot to talk about. Um, what was so amazing about this whole experience was I just put this thing out there and in Seattle, it was called Feature Friday and it just started to take hold. And over two years, I was like looking at what was going on. And then I was talking with other people around the world and not just the United States, but other entrepreneurs around the world. And I discovered that there is a massive, massive hole in the market globally. And there are talented people everywhere in the world. Fuel talent. I mean, you guys are around, you focus on talent. Um, but the amount of talented people in other parts of the world in other countries that aren't afforded the opportunities to be successful that maybe we are. Trust me, there's 99% of this world that simply need the right connections, maybe some more information like you and I have, access to resources and capital, and they would have a path to at least whatever relative success that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's back in 2014, 2016 wasn't as prevalent or like it wasn't happening. And even now, I think there's a lot of work to do, but that was like the moment I said, oh my gosh, especially early stage entrepreneurship globally needs a infrastructure, needs an ecosystem. And, and then when you look at this thing that started to spread to all these other cities, like our, our, our pitch events are an entry into this whole entire thing for a lot of people and they mm -hmm. open up doors and That's we were so awesome. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, I, I know, like, I know it's my unique vision, but in the same time, I'm like, is everyone else not seeing this that like, I don't care if it's Zimbabwe. I don't care if it's Argentina. Damn it. There's people there that just don't have the right resources mm -hmm. or opportunities and we can open that up. And can you imagine what the global impact or when you when you like have another billion people that are just good entrepreneurs creating new businesses mm -hmm. opening markets like that's going to impact the it's world but so how do you how do you measure your success with it when you say like you know it's my vision and you want to go to a zimbabwe and there's no voting and there's no invest you're not pitching investors so there's not necessarily um i mean i'm sure it's organically happening but some stuff's yeah. ha happening out of those events that may, may not even make it to you, that you're even aware that they're happening. Like, hey, oh. these two people met up for coffee after. Next thing you know, they have co-founders <laughs> and these ones invested in that one. And now it's they got such, funded, you know. You know, it's such a good question. Um, the, the simple answer is it's hard if not we don't. May, we, we can't measure like 98% of what's happening, the, the goodness and the positive. Um, my unique view is like, well, that's what I'm in Founders Live is putting into the world and the universe that is just the karma, right? Mm. Like there's just good, like there are people right now around the world talking about Founders Live that I don't even know if what they're talking about or how do we measure that? But um, that's part of the, the karma and the good stuff, right? But what we do measure is obviously it's just, the, you know, basic metrics around, you know, how many cities we're in, how many events are happening, how many startups they're pitching, um, you know, what's the result of that? Mm -hmm. um, Tell us the answer you know, to those questions. Uh, uh, we are in about 70 cities globally. Uh, we have, we reach about 50,000 people and that's growing every single week. Um, and that's just our measured reach. So going to back what you're saying, you know, there's a metric of about 2X on that. I think we, I think we touch about 
a hundred thousand people, but our essentially our community reach is about 50,000. Um, and then we will probably end the year around 90 to a hundred cities launched. And that just means we have what we call a city leader. They are in, um, a part of our team. They're not an employee, but they are the one that says, Hey, I'm going to start this and run this. I'm going to build a team locally. Uh, and let's say Indonesia. So we're like, we're, we've, we've actually, we're blown up around Indonesia and, uh, we brought on a individual that basically just lit up the entire country. So we're launching wow. a number of new cities, which by the way, it's Indonesia is the fifth largest country in the world. They have tremendous startup activity and entrepreneurship there. And wow. again, it's a good example of they're just less yeah. connected to the mainland of the United States, right. at least than, right. you know, and, then, and, so did and yet, you, how did you fund it? Did you just bootstrap this business? And um, like, what, I don't really understand what the business model is. Yeah. So um, basically bootstrapped, I raised less than $50,000 to get it off the ground. Uh, that was like years ago. Um, and, you know, initially, so the phase one of Founders Live was really around, you know, local and, and global partnerships. Um, so just doing deals with kind of bigger, uh, bigger corporations. Um, you know, we have a great partnership with Amazon. We had a, we had a great partnership with Google Cloud, um, you know, we have, you know, a number of partnerships uh, that you would recognize. And then um, really this next phase that we are now in is uh, we have built out our now as we continue forward our premium membership. And so it's a subscription subscription membership. And we've we've released our first tier, which is Founders Live Insider that just gives mm -hmm. a lot more, you know, exclusive content behind the scenes. I'm doing a ton of interviews with people. So we're pulling that content around. Yeah, and that's um, the thing that's $100 a year, $12 a month. Yeah. 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 That seems really reasonable. Yeah, it is. And then um, what we will do over the next year is there's three more tiers that we're going to roll out. We're going to roll out a tier two, very focused on the startup founders. So basically the difference between insider versus the startup, it's going to be called startup growth is um, a lot of you know, resources, um, education ad advisors, information courses, um, access to capital. And that's really for growth founders. So we've kind of went from the, we went from the beginning of like kind of the general public that are like, Hey, this is awesome. I just want more. And I want to be an insider to then we're going to, we're going to roll out a tiered membership for the specific growth startup founders. Then we're going to roll out the next one we're going to roll out is, you know, what's really interesting is um, as we grow this thing, um, there is a lot of people and companies that are like, hey, I want to sell into this community. This is awesome. These companies wow. from around the world. Yes. So what basically a business partner membership that we because we have a marketplace that's starting to grow. And so, you know, for instance, you or, you know, fuel would be able to like, hey, here's our here's basically our door, here's our information, here's you can. Here's where you can get more, but then we have a mechanism to start pushing out like deals and offers, um, give talks on things, maybe create a course and sell it within Founders Live. So oh my gosh, basically it's endless. Anyone, like the possibilities are huge. Oh, the, 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 this is, it is a store, is a global marketplace and we're simply like, this is day one of it. I mean, it's just insane. So, um, and then the last one, which kind of blow your mind is also, the investment side. So when you look at as Founders Life continues to spin this, um, you know we're in 26 countries around the world, and all these pitch events, and there's there's pitch companies, but there's also a winner out of it. Um, you know, then the, it, what's the investment side of this? So basically, creating a, a subscription offering around the data and the information through Founders Live, all the companies that are pitching the ones that are winning, but you know, as investors, you, you're looking for certain segments, you're looking for certain deal flow yeah. at the timing of it and how we build out an offering for the VC and investment side of things as well. Oh and then the God. goal is just to bring those together. Right. So, and, you know, and one of our main things is around, look, VC is just one aspect. Venture capital is not the answer for most. Yeah global companies right so what is the answer and and we're really looking at how we can bring that in and just bring access to capital to more more startups around the world so yeah. it's exciting it's incredible and i also know that you've put some intention around 
you know, when you say the word access, like access to everyone, people who are in countries that don't necessarily have the exposure, people who don't necessarily have access and talk about the karma and leaving an impact. That's incredible. You know, um, I am cur- I'm curious, Nick, how the business has been. I, know, I think we caught up like halfway through this crazy pandemic and your whole business is around travel and events and, yeah. you know, how has your business uh, been impacted through the pandemic yeah you know 2020 was was tough for her a lot of people um i am i think the way i look back at it now is i'm i'm actually grateful and um it was a forcing function in a lot of ways for um for founders live i mean we we actually shifted and pivoted um whatever that word is but we shifted into full streaming and digital and what that did was Um, not only help us really, we built into a system of um, the ability for these experiences. These are not just in-person events that are in a room. So when we have a streaming experience, we can give exposure outside of a city, a country and whatnot. So um, I, you know, to make that shift and pivot was a bit tough. Um, Mm. And then we actually like, we, we, the way I say it is we just like pulled up the hood, rebuilt the entire engine. And that took, pretty much 2020 so we hit the ground running this year and um you know our our new really our new format from streaming to then the digital the community to our membership um and then the last thing i'll say is um it allowed us to build out founders life prime time so founders life prime time is our global competition that all the winners of all the cities elevate up to this like really cool uh, global competition that's broken up into continents. So we have primetime North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. And you can imagine now, so what we're doing is all the winners from all of our city events go into this thing and we have a running yearly, but every quarter there's these segments, essentially there's qualification. It's, It's another voting mechanism. The winners go up there, people can watch a pitch, you know, the video pitch, which is two minutes long, roughly less than that. Um, They can basically click a like button. It's a voting button. And then we stack rank in each of the regions. And every quarter, we're just taking the cream of the top, putting them in a bucket. And at the end of the year, we have the prime time season. And so we have a big event for each continent. And the coolest thing about that is it now becomes this like celebration. And oh, this so, is so cool. <laughs> yeah. So like there's five for each region. It's a pitch competition. It's fun, but we're obviously pulling in like entertainment. We're going to pull in like some great panel discussions. And you think about it, like that's a North America one. And then there's a Latin America one. Then there's a Europe and Africa. And then the winners of that go on and compete at our Founders Live Fest, which is the end of the year, big event. You know, there's one winner. Um, so, you know, I think the theme here is it's a mix of, yeah, like why the hell not? And and you know how much this opens doors for people. But secondly, let's have some fun. Like yeah. <laughs> let's let's yeah. do some cool stuff. You know, yeah. like that's 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 what I'm all about. Yeah, it's incredible. As I'm listening to you, and when I think of you, if I just like close my eyes, I think of Nick Hughes. I think of um, fun, smart connector, um, like energizer. And I think that as I'm talking to you, I'm like, you're like also like logistics. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a whole part of it. That's like, you know, I'm, I'm similar to you. And like, I love to connect people and I love putting people into a room and I love to have a good time. But the whole behind the scenes, all that heavy lifting that seems so effortless for you, that's a skill. That's that's a major skill. Do you have a team behind you? Like, how many we people do. are, are we do yeah we this? we have about um right now we're at about six people and um you know we're still looking to onboard them most you know, full time and so we're getting there and um but you're so right and i think you know with with deeper introspection like it's just funny i think we're all in this i sometimes we don't really notice exactly what we do and how we do it and how good we are at it we just do it and you know, sometimes taking a step back and realizing like, cause like, I can tell you that my life, my life totally shifted. Um, I think it was about January, you know, how like, I don't know about you, but the pandemic was, there was just this energetic, like, all right, we're going to kind of go hibernate for a while and you, you do your stuff and you work at home and all that. 
Um, for me, it was like after the new year, I was like, you know what, I, I'm going to get back. I got to get back to traveling. I got to get back. I, I need movement. Um, I need m- movement to then get my momentum back to of get course. my confidence and my mojo. You know what I mean? So totally. um, my life totally, I just kicked it back in motion and then it just went massive. Like my calendar is insane and I will be a self admitting I do too much and I just do it because you just get it done. And yeah, but sometimes I, you know, people can judge that, but it might give you energy. Yeah. Like, you know, different, you get a different type of energy than other people might. And that's, you know, you I think are. I do. I think I do. But I also like, I'm, I'm at that, you know, the stage as a, as a leader, like there is this, like, I'm hitting that ceiling and it's like, yeah. okay, now we got to like restructure and you're talking about logistics. And now it's like, okay, we got to like revamp the team for, because we just like leveled up, yeah. you know? And, well, you're and, kicking it into a whole nother level oh, now it's with insane. this whole digital platform yeah, and it's going insane, global but it and is, all of it. I can tell you that it is mostly, some days it's like, mm, but mostly I am so happy and it's the coolest, it's the coolest job ever. That makes know? me happy. You deserve it. So what are your goals for the business and plans? Like what should we be excited about looking forward to? Yeah. Well, you know, I, um, there's one more thing I'll, I'll say after this, but, you know, I think I just kind of said it like, um, in terms of prime time, you know, we, we, yeah. we beta tested this last year, just on a really low level. And so we're really excited about this year. Prime time basically is going forward. It's going to be Q4 of, of yeah. every year. So starting in October. So we're really, really excited about prime time. Um, we're also excited about rolling out this new brand that we're creating called the inspired ones. And really I've been focusing on the convergence of creativity, entertainment, and entrepreneurship. And so when you actually think about like entrepreneurship over the last 20 years, and you look at like these, you know, artists, musicians, athletes, uh, you know, what's crazy is they are entrepreneurs as well. And I think it's tied to the advancement of technology, social media and influencers. You now have these amazing, like, because back in the day, they were just athletes and they made some money playing football or basketball. Well, no, they're brands now. And how do they build their brand? How do they look at the world and build company and, um, and, 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 you know, influence and business? And more importantly, they're now starting to invest. So Will Smith has dream you know dreamers vc you know um you know um carmel anthony is is doing a ton of investments um you name it like russell wilson and all these people right so we're excited about actually creating a show to bring on these people to get what inspires them and then more importantly hey will smith you're just an actor but in reality no what else are you, what is your purpose? What, what, what is your why? What do you want to be remembered as? Because I'm seeing that these individuals are creating many, many more purposeful things off the screen or off the field. And we want to capture that, but then we're going to bring in our winners. So uh, our early stage founders to like join on stage and, and pitch and then get feedback from these individuals and then uh, feedback from the audience. But the coolest thing is in this environment, we can have people that are watching. It's a live Live show so people can ask questions they can actually type them they pop up there's a queue and we can pull people on screen essentially on the stage and they can ask questions and interact as well so we are really excited that we are launching you know the inspired ones it's basically a live show that happens every wednesday and we are intent on having you know names that you may really really recognize that when are you, you going to might- launch it well, we've soft launched it already, but there's a public, um, basically, you know, we, we are holding these every Wednesday at 6 PM Pacific time now, but oh, there will be a much larger, it seems like, and it looks like from Facebook, a much larger launch of this app. It's called hotline and their new drop in audio experience, essentially a room. And that will be in mid, you know, kind of early to mid June. And oh my so, gosh. I'm so excited. Yeah, so, 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 just so like, proud of you. Like you have just, thank you. I've loved watching you grow and, and um, just continue to crush it. My ultimate question for you um, is what fuels you? It would have to be, you know, I, I think Founders Live orients around the word inspiration. So what fuels me 
is not only the inspiration that we create, but you know what? And I just saw it today on screen is like when these people are like so nervous and it's their first thing. And it's like the, the, like the, the raw nervous early stage rookie founder that gets on stage and just does like is taking the steps to do their thing. Yeah. Because you're giving them the platform, making them feel safe to do it. It's such a gift. It absolutely inspires the heck out of me. It fuels me every day to get up and, I'm excited because that's, that's, what's my, that's my life for the, for a yeah. long time and the rest of my life. And that, that's what fuels me is just like the people, the, the sparkle in people's eye, you know, the, the idea might not work, but you know what? I want to see that person succeed and how we can build that out globally. It's going to be really exciting. Well, I'm excited. You've been such a gift to our community in Seattle, and I'm thrilled to see that you're spreading the love, not just um, nationally, but internationally, you're just taking over the world. I love it. Thank you for listening to the What Fuels You podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, and follow us on social media to keep up with the latest news and episodes. You can also contact us at podcast at fueltalent.com to provide feedback, ask questions, and share topics or guests you would like us to cover in the future. We hope you feel inspired by our guests and that we have helped fuel your day. Join us next time for another episode of What Fuels You.